Amal Kumar sharing with you an excellent question on domain of logarithmic functions. The question here is, find the domain of function ln x square minus 2x minus 2. Now as you know, this logarithmic function is defined for the argument values greater than 0. So it should be always positive, right? So that gives us the restrictions for the function, correct? Okay? So we need to find domain of this function. So we know that x square minus 2x minus 2 should always be greater than 0. Only then ln of this is defined. So that gives us the uh, domain of this particular function, correct? Okay? Now let's try to factor this. We don't have any two numbers which could multiply to this and the sum could be minus 2. So we'll use quadratic formula to solve for this, right? So, so let's use quadratic formula to find zeros. Uh, let's find zeros of this function. We know this is a parabola which opens upwards. So basically, it opens kind of like this, right? So, but we don't know what the zeros are. But this equation definitely represents a parabola, correct? So let's find zeros using the quadratic formula, which is x is equals to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a, right? So minus of minus 2, that is our b, a is 1, c is minus 2. So minus of minus 2 plus minus square root of minus 2 square minus 4 times a is 1 and c is minus 2, right, divided by 2 times 1. So that gives you 2 plus minus square root of, we can always calculate this value, 4 and uh, 8 plus 8, right, divided by 2, which is equals to uh, 2 plus minus, this is 12, right, so 12 could be written as, let me write down this as uh, 12, we'll calculate it, right. So let me take it to the right side to do further calculations and then we we'll write down the domain. So I'll just simplify this. So we have x as equals to uh, 2 plus minus, 12 could be written as square root of 4 times 3, right, that is 12. We are just going through details of this calculation. Square root of 4 is 2, so I could write this as 2 square root 3 over 2, right? And then we can divide by 2, so we get 1 plus minus square root of 3. So that is the value of x, right? So these are the zeros for the function which opens upwards. 1 plus minus square root of 3. So there are two zeros symmetrically placed. So I can always now sketch this graph we are actually interested in zeros. So kind of like this. And we know this goes through. Because this is 1 plus square root 3, 1 minus square root 3. So it gives us two zeros. One will be at, uh, okay, actually symmetric about, about 1. I'm sorry, this diagram, okay. Uh, let me use the calculator to find the actual value and then we are going to so 1 minus square root 3 is equal to in decimals minus 7 so the approximate value here is minus 0 0.732 and if I do 1 plus square root 3 then I get in decimals uh, 2.73, right? So, so it is actually this point is, should have been 1. I made it wrong. So, anyway, so I'll change this y axis. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. So, my y axis actually is kind of here, right? Uh, this is, I should not say axis, this is the axis of symmetry, okay? Axis of symmetry at 1. Right? Let me make this correction. Axis of symmetry at 1. And this point here is 1 minus square root of 3. And this point here is 1 plus 
square root of 3, right? So, x is of symmetry is at 1. So, x is of symmetry is x equals to 1. Is it okay? So, this point is 1. That's, that is my y-axis. This is x-axis. Okay. So, I made this correction and I hope it's perfectly fine now. So, that is what you get. Well, let's get back to the question of finding domain of this function. So, what is the domain of this function? So, clearly, domain is the part when this function is positive. That is, we are looking for x square minus 2x minus 2 greater than 0. That means this side, right? So, this is the domain of the function. So, let me write down the domain of the function here. So, the answer here is the domain of this function is from minus infinity to 1 minus square root 3, right? Union from this point, which is 1 plus square root 3 to positive infinity, right? So that becomes the domain of this particular function. I hope the steps are clear. You understand how we found it, right? So this is actually the axis of symmetry, and here is y-axis, correct? And any interval which is on the left side of this zero and the right side of the other zero, where the graph is positive, becomes the domain of this particular function. So that is the domain of our logarithmic function. I'm Anil Kumar, and I hope that helps. Thank you, and all the best.